بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى محمد وعلى آله As, as you see, uh, the topic of our discussion is going to be Arfan or Islamic mysticism. This is a controversial topic. The same time, at the same time, is very important to have an appropriate idea about this important Islamic science. Some of our scholars uh, agree that this has an Islamic origin, is one of Islamic uh, sciences, and we have taken its reasons and its rules and regulations from our authentic sources, which is the Holy Quran, our Islamic narrations, and even intellect. Uh, in contrary to this viewpoint, there are some Islamic scholars disagree with the first, with the first group, and they believe it has another origin. It has nothing to do with uh, Islam, and. Uh, some of these sort of viewpoints. First of all, I would like to apologize in front of uh, you scholars, and uh, I'm sure at least some of you uh, should be here uh, discussing the same subject instead of me. But uh, I apologize and, tr and try to my best to uh, have some idea about this important topic, which is going to be beneficial to all, all of us. Uh, first of all, one of the important points in order to know uh, this science uh, which is famous in definition of Irfan, uh, we should mention this point that, first of all, what's the meaning of this word? Uh, and you know the literal meaning of Irfan has come from uh, the root Arafa, to know or uh, the word Irfan, or another word which is used some, sometimes, al marifa means not knowledge in itself. But as an expression, as a term, mostly uh, it is said that uh, we can gain this knowledge uh, not through narration, not through intellect, and uh, even no sort of sense or experience would be helpful. <coughs> Rather, uh, we, we're going to gain this knowledge through uh, inner intuition or uh, interior witness. This is something that has been said and somehow we can accept this uh, definition. But in order to have a better idea, uh, we should explain and mention some other points. Later, we're going to have uh, an appropriate idea about Irfan or Islamic mysticism. Here, uh, we should mention that uh, it has an important division. We have two sorts of Irfan, Al-Irfan and Nadari. Well, Irfan al-Amali, theoretical Irfan or practical. As it could be understood from the title, theoretical Irfan is 
presentational knowledge of the essence, names, attributes, and manifestations of God. When we say presentational knowledge, we mean uh, that sort of knowledge that should be achieved through our inner part, through our soul, not acquired knowledge. We can uh, acquire it from external world. And practical irfan is something that sometimes uh, is called seir, uh, seir vasoluk, or that spiritual journey that uh, wafer is going to experience uh, through stages and levels of uh, fun. And sometimes uh, is not going to be explained or experienced uh, by others. Each and every person should experience it by himself or herself. This is the second uh, part of Irfan, and the ultimate goal of this second Irfan, which is going to be with the help of the first part, is going to be divine proximity and closeness to God. Right now, uh, we should explain an important uh, question. What's the meaning of divine proximity? What's the meaning of closeness to God? Let me ask some of youngsters over here because our uh, brothers, I'm sure that they know the uh, reply to this question. But I would like to ask some of our young brothers in order to have a better session. Uh, who knows what's the meaning when we say uh, we want to achieve uh, proximity to God? As we believe, God has no physical or material aspect. God is not sitting somewhere to stand and go to be closer and closer to Him. So what's the meaning of this proximity or closeness to God? Okay. As, yeah, as uh, probably you know, or you have studied, or you have read somewhere, uh, it means to achieve, let me uh, tell you something, then you're going to understand the correct response. Uh, there are two sort of attributes of God. The first sort of attribute of God is that one that is particularly for himself. For example, God is creator. You cannot imagine any other uh, things, any other uh, person, any other creature that has this attribute to be creator. This is the first sort of attribute of God. The second sort of attribute of God is that sort that could be achieved uh, by human beings. For example, uh, to be merciful. God is merciful. We as human beings also can be merciful. So this second sort of attributes of God, when human being uh, achieve this sort of attribute in himself or herself, is going to be close to God. When he, ha he or she has this attribute more and more in himself or herself is going to be closer and closer to God. So this is the meaning. When, and when we say the perfection, when we call the expression perfect man, we mean the highest level of these attributes that could be achieved in uh, any human being. 